So, So our environment, okay? So this is the easiest topic. So basically, what do you mean by environment? So environment means what? Everything which is surrounding us is considered as what? Environment. Okay, so. Everything. that surrounds us is called as what our environment now what are the things which sur uh, which surrounds us there are two types okay so the first one is what biotic and the second one is abiotic so biotic means living factors whereas abiotic means non living factors so when this both interact together okay what it forms is called as what ecosystem okay so the, when there whenever there is a like interaction between the biotic as well as abiotic components it forms an ecosystem okay so in this ecosystem we are going to see about the various terms such as what food web or food chain, <clears throat> energy transfers, okay, okay, so these are some of the terms that we'll be seeing in this chapter. So moving forward, now as I already told you, what is environment, what is ecosystem? Okay, now in this ecosystem, basically we are having two types. Okay. So ecosystem components. So this is basically of two types. One, which is termed as natural and another one, which is artificial. Now, natural and artificial. Okay, the same like what we say natural resources and renewable and non-renewable in the same way here natural and artificial we are having. So, natural ecosystem means what? Already it is present in the nature. Means nature is nothing but the natural ecosystem. Okay, so here we can say that which exists in the nature on its own. Now, what are the things which exist already in the nature? Like forest, lake, ocean, all those stuff. Whereas artificial means what? Man-made. For example, we can say um, the aquariums, okay, then the gardens, parks, all those stuff, field, the crop field. So these all come under what? The artificial ecosystem. Okay, so as I already told you, in an ecosystem, the two components, which is there, that is natural and artificial ecosystem. These are what? Two types of ecosystems. So Already we know that there are two components of ecosystem that is biotic and abiotic. Okay, so this biotic and abiotic, in this, the biotic component is further divided into certain classifications such as, I'll just write it down. Okay, biotic components. So biotic means leaving. So in this we are having three categories 
okay that is producer consumer decomposer okay so under the consumers again you have three types basically which is herbivore carnivore omnivore these are what the biotic components okay whereas abiotic components in that classification is like just you have to write the examples such as temperature humidity okay whatever gases are present in the atmosphere all this comes under what the abiotic components okay so now this producer consumer decomposer whatever is there this is all on the basis of what nutrition components okay like producers if we say that is what the first phase so producers means basically what plants consumers consumers means who they will directly depend upon the producers okay whereas decomposers means what those which will decompose or decay that particular products for the survival okay so these are what three categories which are there then we are having the simple things okay, i'll just write the yeah so i'll just write it over here producer means the organisms which can prepare their own food so the same photosynthesis uh, definition which is there that is applicable over here to the producers because the examples that we can consider is what plants as well as bga bga is nothing but the blue green algae okay then you have is what the consumers so consumers means what the organisms which consume the food prepared by producers prepared by producers so here i already i told you the three categories so in which the first one is the herbivore means they will eat only plants okay like you can take uh, the herbivorous animals such as goat or uh, cow all those stuff then second one carnivore so this carnivore means what they will eat only animals as food like lion tiger and the last one is the omnivore so omnivore means combination of both so they will eat both plants and animals like for example us human beings then i told you decomposers so decomposers means what decomposers means now this category here what will happen is whatever the microorganisms are there they will break the substance means whatever complex substances are, substances are there they'll first break it down into the simpler one and then they will consume it so the microorganisms that break down the complex organic compounds present in dead organisms into simpler one so the examples is what certain fungi or bacteria these are the examples of what decomposers okay now uh, like like the herbivores carnivores and omnivores one more category which you can include is what parasites okay because parasites means what 
Now, these are the organisms which leave on the host's body, take everything from the host and leave the host dead. Okay, so that is called as what? Parasites. Parasites means the organisms which leave on the body of host and take food from it. Okay, so basically how the host is going to leave from that only the nutrition it will take and it will survive. So those things are called as what? The parasites. Okay, so this is one more thing you can include in the uh, this one, the consumer category. Okay, so after this all together forms what something which is called as food chain. Now, already I told you, depending upon the flow of nutrition, okay, these categories are there, that is producers, consumers and decomposers. So, let's see the next one, which is nothing but the food chain. So, what is food chain? Food chain means nothing but the flow of the nutrients and energy from one organism to another at different tropic levels. Okay, so food chain means what? It is the flow of what? Nutrients and energy. Now, as I told you how the plants produce their own food, this food has been eaten by whom? The next category, which is carnivorous. This is again eaten by the omnivorous. So this is only what? The transfer of the nutrients or the energy from one level to the another level. Okay, so here, basically, whatever the food chain flow is there, it is a single unidirectional flow. And this starts with what? Producer. So producers are what? The starting point over here. So if you want to draw a food chain, how it comes? For example, we can take a sun. From the sun to the plants. Some plants or flowers, they are eaten by say... Uh, the small creatures like caterpillars, then frog, then snake, birds. Okay, so you can see how the energy is getting transferred from basically from the sun to the last one, which is the birds. Okay, so you, this thing, same can be written as what? Producers, herbivore. Carnivore. Now, you're, if you're having two carnivore, primary, secondary, tertiary carnivore, like that, you can add it. Okay. And then here it is birds. So, birds will be the tertiary carnivore. Okay. So, this is what, how the energy as well as nutrition is transferred from one tropic level to the next tropic level. Okay. Then, as I told you, it is unidirectional. Means from here again back it will not come. Okay. So once it goes like this, this is how the flow of the energy takes place. But once that birds or whatever carnivore is there, the topmost carnivore, when it is dead, obviously whatever minerals and nutrition are there, they will return back to the environment itself. That is to the soil itself. Okay. So... In this very important part we have is the flow of energy. Flow of energy between trophic levels. So already we know the different trophic levels. Okay, that is the sunlight producer, uh, then the herbivorous, carnivorous, top carnivorous, whatever it is. So now, the flow of energy is very important because whenever it transfers the energy from, say, the producer to the carnivores, here what happens is, if I take a green plant, green plant is going to take only 1% energy from the sun. 
and then that particular energy is converted into what food energy So here basically it follows something which is called as what? 10% law. Now what is this 10% law? As per the name itself, 10% law means only 10% of the energy is transferred from one tropic level to the next tropic level. Okay. So rest whatever remaining out of 100, if 10 is used for the transfer, remaining is what? 90%. So, this 90% is used in the metabolic processes. Now, which type of metabolic processes? The simple things such as growth, okay, digestion, reproduction and so on. Okay, so what is happening is when this 10% of the energy is moving from one tropic level to the another tropic level, due to this, what there will be is a, a gradual decrease in energy. Okay, hence the maximum tropic levels which will be there is how much? 3 to 4. Okay, so it is actually in the form of a pyramid. Producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. Okay, so as I told you, when it goes up, a decrease in energy takes place. So for example, first if it's 1 kilojoule, then 10 kilojoule. 100 and 1000. So there will be what? A decrease in the energy as it goes upwards. Okay. So to this only there is one more term related which is called as what? Food web. Food web. Okay. So food web and food chain is mostly similar only. In food chain you will know that how the energy moves from one tropic level to the next. But food web means what? It is nothing but interconnected food chains. Interconnected food chains. Okay, because if you take a particular ecosystem, it is not necessary that only one food chain will be there. There will be different, different food chains. Why? Because in an ecosystem, we have aquatic ecosystem, right? A mountain is an ecosystem. So various types of ecosystem we are having. So depending upon which type of ecosystem is there, the food chain which is there, that will also differ. Okay, so food web is nothing but when the large number of food chains come together or when they interconnect together, then something is formed, which is called as what? A food web. Okay, so here in this, Related to this only one more thing we have, which is called as bio, biomagnification or biological magnification. Now, what is this biomagnification or biological magnif uh, magnification? So, biological magnification means nothing but the concentration of Harmful chemicals increases with every uh, next tropic level in food chain. So energy decreases from one tropic level to the another tropic level. But whatever the harmful substances which are created by each organism in the tropic level, it is going to increase in the next tropic level. So that itself is called as what? Biological magnification. Okay, because what happens over here is when you reach the topmost thing of the pyramid, at that time, whatever chemicals, the toxic things which are produced, okay, it will be accumulated where? Ultimately in the human body. So hence... Whatever maximum concentration is there of such chemicals, they get 
because the ultimate consumer is whom human beings so chemicals get accumulated where in the humans so hence they are considered as what the top level in a food chain okay so basically the important thing that you have to keep in mind over here is what one is the energy flow okay and at the 10% law which is over here because as i told you generally there are what so many individuals or so many types of organisms in this ecosystem okay so when you go from the lower to the higher what is going to happen only 10% energy is been transferred rest 90% is used in the metabolism so never ever 100% of the energy is transferred to a particular organism okay so if someone asks you in the successive tropic level how much energy is been transferred it's a 10% uh what do you say law which is applicable over here okay so the sun the plants then you can take another uh, like you can take deer and lion okay so in the pyramid form if you see sun gives only how much 1% 1% of sunlight is only used by the plants to prepare the food so next whatever goes is just the 10% okay that is the maximum like this it will come okay so now we know the food chain food web and all the related terms okay now whatever human activities are done to the environment there are certain what effect on the environment so let's see those effect now so the first thing which is there is the ozone layer depletion so ozone layer now what is this ozone layer ozone layer is nothing but a protective blanket around the earth and what does this do it is going to absorb most of the harmful uv rays of sun so because of this ozone layer only whatever the living beings are there they are been protected from different different health hazards okay so how does this ozone layer get depleted now ozone ozone means what o3 right so if you consider or if you take uh, the example of atmosphere so this ozone will be higher where in the atmosphere there are different parts of atmosphere so in that stratosphere which is there there you will find this in the major amount which is very poisonous for the uh, what do you say the living creatures which are present on the earth so how is a particular ozone molecule made okay so o3 so obviously the ozone is made up of what three atoms of oxygen when it combines together we get something which is a ozone molecule okay so this if you want to write it how it will be o2 uv o plus o then o plus o2 will give you o3 so whenever there is a high uv radiation on this oxygen gas okay that time only this molecule called as ozone has been formed so if this ozone uh, means the uv okay when it is in more level when it reaches to the environment it may cause certain diseases such as what cancer okay or you can say any other skin diseases and all those stuff so hence what this ozone layer does is it a maximum what what it will try is to absorb the uv radiation so that it will not leaves the uh, earth 
okay but what is happening is due to the human activities now what are the human activities now we make certain things for example if you take um, the vehicles or if you take the refrigerator okay all this stuff is having something which is called as what cfcs that is chlorofluorocarbon okay so this chlorofluorocarbon is the major culprit which is depleting the ozone layer okay so uh, mostly this is found where in the refrigerators okay you will find the ref in the refrigerators and even in the uh, fire extinguishers also cfcs are present so when the cfc molecules reaches the ozone it starts what depleting that particular layer and there will be what minute holes through which the uh, uv rays can easily pass and reach the earth surface okay so this is how the ozone layer depletion takes place so the, there are different other causes also like the vehicle pollution okay all greenhouse effect and all those stuff but the major thing is what the cfc okay this is the main cause of what ozone depletion fine so then this is how the uh, what do you say depletion of ozone layer takes place a apart from that the melting of the glaciers all those natural things which we hear nowadays okay all this stuff are due to what these cfcs only mostly okay and where are cfcs present they are present mostly in refrigerator then as i told you even acs then the fire extinguishers aerosol sprays okay so this is all about the ozone depletion next one is what garbage uh, disposal the another major concern garbage disposal okay now see basically two types of waste we are having one which is what biodegradable and another one non biodegradable so simple term biodegradable and non biodegradable means what biodegradable means you can break them down like you can take vegetables okay food waste and all those stuff plant waste everything but non biodegradable means what you cannot break it down easily for example glass or uh, the plastics okay the polythene okay so management of this thing is very important waste management is very important so there are for this waste or garbage management only there are certain methods which we implement which are called as what disposal methods disposal methods so disposal methods means what landfills okay or you can say recycling composting the sewage treatment then re, uh, recycling and reuse okay that also we can write so now what are these terms okay see now there is a thing which is called as what biogas plant so in this biogas plant what we can do is whatever biodegradable waste which are there you can put in this biogas plant and it is going to generate what biogas plus manure in the same way sewage treatment plants sewage treatment plants means what before that sewage is led to the rivers you just have to treat it okay and make sure that it is clean from all the waste so that when it will reach the river bodies they are not contaminated that thing is only called as what sewage treatment plant then you have something which is called as landfills so landfills mean nothing but in uh, wherever there is a low lying areas you just have to bury your waste over there okay and then by using a bulldozer just flat it down so after uh, some time what will happen is it is going to decompose so that is called as what land filling then you have composting now composting means here you can take organic waste for the disposal so uh, whatever organic wastes are there in a compost pit like for example you know you put the waste then the soil 
like we have the vermicompost where the earthworms decompose the waste. So in the same way, composting is also there. So whatever garbage is there that you have to cover it by what? The soil. Then again, if it's a vermicompost, you can add some earthworms. Then again, soil, then water like that. Okay, so those things are called as composting. And recycling and reuse means simple term. Recycling means what? Those things which cannot be, what do you say, decomposed completely. You just have to recycle it again. Give it a new shape. Okay. And then you can reuse it. For example, the newspapers. Okay, the, uh, the books, uh, pages which are there. All those stuff can be recycled and re reused again. Okay, so these are what? Certain types of disposable methods that you can use.